39th All-Star Game. Its tradition shaped by these men comes to the Houston Astrodome today with the state of Texas adding something new to that tradition, the first All-Star Game to be televised at night and the first one played indoors. From his birth in Chicago in 1933 as the dream of the late Arch Ward, sports editor of the Chicago Tribune, to Houston's palatial eighth wonder of the world, the All-Star Game has annually been the showcase of baseball's best, with the starting lineup selected by the major leaguers themselves. The National League leads the series with 20 victories. The American League has won 17, and there's been one tie. Deep in the heart of Texas, welcome to the 35th anniversary mid-season baseball classic. From Houston, at the Astrodome, NBC Sports presents the 1968 All-Star Game. Hello, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy to call the play-by-play -play for you. Pee Wee Reese, Sandy Koufax will be analyzing we had a rain most of the day here that left everybody unconcerned in Houston because they knew it would be play ball tonight under perfect conditions, air-conditioned theater comfort. We'll have a standing room crowd of 52,000, and they'll be watching to see if the American League can end a five-year domination, a five-year winning streak of the National League. The National League is the favorite based on recent history and a better rest of pitching staff that Sandy will be telling you about. And we have two Mr. Zeros starting, two right-handers, Don Drysdale of the Dodgers in the National League and Louis Tion of the Indians in the American League will be the starting pitchers. They have each thrown seven shutouts in the first half of the season. And Pee Wee, this is the National League part. And these National League players have all played in here over the years since the Astrodome was built. Many of the American Leaguers are seeing it for the first time. Do you think this will be an advantage for the National League? No way, Kurt. No way. And I went out with these fellas on the infield before the game with Brooks Robinson, Pergosi, Carew, and, and Tillabrew. And they say, if the National League catches this ball off the AstroTurf, we're professionals, there's no reason why we shouldn't catch it. And if the American League loses, it won't be because of the AstroTurf. All right. Now, of course, in a short series or one game, it's usually pitching that tells the story. What about the pitching here tonight, Sandy? Well, Kurt, I think uh, in that department, I think the National League has the edge. Not that they have the better pitching. Uh, they are carrying one extra pitcher. They have eight, where the American League only has seven. And of the seven pitchers the American League has, five of them started on Sunday, including Louis Tion, who was starting the game uh, for the American League. And the National League only has two that pitched on uh, Sunday. One is Jerry Kuzman, who pitched with one batter, and Tom Seaver, who pitched one inning. Everybody else is well-rested. Don Drysdale, a starter going with his normal three days rest. So I think that could favor the National League here tonight. National League will be moving out in just a moment. And we'll be giving you the batting orders again in case you're going to uh, run down and keep score. Here's the American League batting order. Jim Fregosi is the shortstop of the Angels. Rod Carew of the Twins is batting second at second base. Jastrzemski of the Red Sox is hitting third in center field. Howard of the Senators is the cleanup man in right field. Horton of the Tigers is in left field, hitting fifth. Killebrew of the Twins is at first base, batting sixth. Freehand of the Tigers is catching, batting seventh. Robinson of the Orioles is uh, batting eighth to third, and Louis Tiant is pitching. He'll go only two innings. He worked six and two-thirds innings on Sunday. He says his arm is tired, so he's only going to pitch two innings. No starter can go over three innings, by the way. In the National League lineup, Willie Mays in center field. Flood is batting second in left field of the Cardinals. McCovey of the Giants is hitting third at first base. Aaron of the Braves is the cleanup man in right field. Santo of the Cubs is hitting fifth at third. Helms of the Reds is at second, batting sixth. Brody of the Mets, batting seventh, catching. Kessinger of the Cubs is the shortstop, batting eighth. And Drysdale of the Dodgers on the mound with his warm-up pitching. Well, do tell you more about his old teammate. Here is Sandy Kofax. Kurt down 10 and 5 this year and having a fine year. He's got a great ERA of 1.37. And as I said, it's just been a great year for him as he set the all-time uh, consecutive innings scoreless record this year. Don's got a good fastball, a 
sinking fastball. Throws quite a bit of them, and a slider and a curveball. But this year he's had great control. All right, here we go now. Jim Fagosi of the Angels, the first batter up. The All-Star game's underway with a strike. Fagosi for the year batting 273. Eight home runs, 31 RBIs. He's been hot. He's got a 14-game batting streak. He's just safely in 16 of his last 18 games just before the All-Star break. The one-strike pitch by Drysdale is a curve high and inside. One and one. Carew's on deck, and then Yastrzemski. The outfield playing for Gossi straight away. Jim born in San Francisco lives now in Anaheim, the home of the Angels, 26 years old. There's a pop off to the right. Going over is Grody, the catcher, and right into the camera enclosure there. One ball, two strikes. There's not much room here in foul territory behind the plate and in front of the dugout. Nobody on, nobody out. And the 2-2 delivery. There's a smash in the deep left field. That ball is off the wall. Gets away from Clark. The Gorsi's in the second and has a stand-up double leading off the game. Quick, we're going to see two different styles in pitching tonight. Drysdale starting for the National League and Teon starting for the American League. Drysdale is very smooth, as you notice, and Teon, as we saw a couple of weeks ago, is quite herky-jerky. Throws from all different positions. Smooth. Drysdale is very smooth. All right, Rod Theroux of the Minnesota Twins up, batting 286, one homer, 14 RBIs. Bedosi on second, nobody out. Time called. And then Carew asked for time, and Crawford yelled it behind the plate. Carew was the only rookie to start in the game last year, so he started now two years in a row in his first two years in the big league. They're playing him as a full hitter to right. Bouncing ball to the right side. McCovey handles it easily, and advancing the third is Fregosi. For the American League, is a runner on third, one out. Through bouncing out to McCovey, and here's Carl Yastrzemski, who was the player of the year last year. Not quite having the season this year that he had last year, but uh, he's still having a good one. He's hitting 301. 13 homers, 33 runs batted in. And the outfield has just been waved deep and over to right. Carl had been in a bad slump. He'd gone 21 games without a home run, but in Sunday's doubleheader against the Twins, he hit a home run in each game at Fenway Park. Big shot, he takes about as hard as cut as anyone in the majors. And thanks to the Houston Astros for their nice message. That's a $2 million scoreboard, by the way, you're going to be watching tonight. Glasdale. Something extra on that one. That shoulder high fastball. He's got the strength in the hole two strikes. Right now, Carl's the runner-up man in the American League batting race to his teammate, Ken Harrelson. And it's our center field camera looking in now. One ball, two strikes to count to Yastrzemski. Breaking pitch, just missing. Two balls, two strikes. Kremski last year was the only player in the All-Star game to have three hits in that two to one 15 inning game in Anaheim that the National League won. Now he was on base five times, he had a couple of walks. For Dorsey at third, one out. And the two two pitch via Kremski. Pops it up down the foul line. Back pedaling. Sano grabs it. That runner's still on third. The Princeton fouls out to third base from Sano. Now it's two down for the American League. And Frank Howard, 6'7", 278 pounds. That looks like a toothpick in his hand. This is his first All-Star 
game. And of course, he went on the famous flurry in May. He had 10 homers in six games. And the crowd looks at the size and oohs and awes at him. A gigantic man. He's leading the majors in homers right now at 25. A line shot to shortstop second there. And Graziel gets out of the game. So in the top of the first, no runs for the American League. One hit. There were no errors and one man left. Middle of the first inning, the American League nothing. The National League coming to bat. Cleveland's brilliant right-hander Louis Tion starts for the American League. Here's Sandy to tell you about it. Kurt Tion's having a great year. He's 14-5 and five, an ERA of 1.24. He throws just about everything and from just about everywhere. He throws over the top, throws sidearm, he throws three quarters. He's got a good fastball. His curveball and slider, he calls them two different pitches, but his catchers keep saying they're pretty much the same. He'll throw a hesitation pitch, and he'll throw a slow curve every now and then, and he's liable to throw it from any angle. Now, fans study his delivery, especially the way he jerks his head around. He's a really a herky-jerky pitcher, and his motion gives the batters a lot of trouble. This is his first All-Star game, and many of the National Leaguers have never seen him before. Willie Mays leading off. This is the sixth of All-Star game that he's been a leadoff batter. There's the curve by uh, Tion. Oh, he'll give you over straight overhand, three quarters, side arm, change speeds, and throws that head and those legs and arms all over the lot. Mays hits the bounding ball by Brooks Robinson in the left field. Willie Horton is up with it. Willie Mays leads off for the National League with a single. Each leadoff batter and on base. And now Kurt Flood's up. Flood batting 316 has been above the 300 mark all year for the Cardinals. Five homers, 37 runs batted in. This is Kurt's hometown where he was born in Houston. He lives now in St. Louis. 30 years old. Mays on first. Nobody out, no score, last to the first. Tiant making his move. Willie Mays back, ball gets away, there goes Mays to second. And he's in there. Willie doesn't run the bases as much as he used to, he's older now. 36, but he can go when he wants to, and a uh, dangerous runner like him shows what can happen. He'll make you throw him out on the bases, Kurt. He came up after the slide and turned and faked like he was going to go to third. He's trying to get Harmon to throw the ball. Now he's working now, three and two to Kurt Flood. Willie Mays at second, nobody out. Last of the first inning, no score. That's over the head of the catcher. There goes Mays to third. Flood the first. Looks like he tried to put something extra on that fastball. A strike got pitched and got away from him. Sure, I think it got away a little bit, but I think they got crossed up in their signs because uh, Freehand never even went up after it. He looked like he was looking for something down low. The ball just went right over his head. Wild pitch charged against Dion. Flood on with a base on balls and Willie McCovey. He's batting 293 this year for the Giants. Leads the National League in homers with 20, and the National League in runs batted in with 53. Strong left-handed pull hitter. They play in deep and toward right. Runners on first and third. Nobody out. Bounding ball to Carew. They go for one, back to first, double play, and in the score is Willie May. No run batted in for McCovey. Carew to Fregosi to Killebrew. The National League takes the lead. One to nothing. And here's Hank Aaron now, with two down, nobody on. Aaron. Didn't think he was a double play back again. Fairly close at first. Aaron didn't think he'd be voted on the team. He was hitting only 236 when the ballots came in. 
Don't worry about him. He'll be up there before the season's over. He has the highest lifetime average of any active player. Lifetime batting average of 316. Aaron goes for it and fouls it off. He was looking for that fat one. Three and one to Hank Aaron. Heard I talked to Henry Aaron before the game about his hitting and asked him, is there any reason for him hitting 240 right now? He says, TV, the only thing that I can think about, Joe Torrey hitting in back of me, which we've talked about so often, was out of the lineup and they were just pitching around me. I started swinging at bad pitches, got me in a slump, but I think I'm all right now. And Tion throws three and one. Ball four, that's the second walk that Tion's given up here in the first inning. Puts Aaron on first, two down, and brings up Sandler. This game was authorized under television rights granted by the Commission of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the commissioner is prohibited. Ron Sano, a slugging first baseman of the Chicago Cubs, is up. He's also batting 247, has 13 homers, 47 runs batted in. There goes Aaron. Ground ball is short. For Gossi, over to first. And that's it for the National League. Sano grounding out short to first. The National League had one run. There was one hit, one American League error, and one man left. At the end of the first inning, it's the National League one and the American League nothing. There's a picture of the gondola right in the center of the dome here, and now it's looking down. This is a shot you see, uh, and this is the only ballpark in the world you can see this kind of a television shot. And we'll be showing it to you from time to time. Willie Horton of the American League League leaders, the Detroit Tigers, leading off here for the American League in the second. Willie batting 285, enjoying a great year. 21 homers, 47 runs batted in. It's a fly ball to Hank Aaron and Wright. One away. This is quite an outfield defensively the National League has. All of them are golden glovers. Kurt Flood. Five years in a row has won the Golden Glove defensively. Willie Mays, 10 years in a row, and Hank Aaron's won it three times. And Flood very graciously gave way to Mays in center field and volunteered to move to left. But you won't see a better defensive outfield than the National League has right now. And a high fly ball and a shallow right by Killebrew. A pop backing up is Tommy Helms of the Reds to take it. And they're two down quickly here in the top of the second. Killebrew of the Twins, who is hitting 204. He's been in a bad slump here in recent weeks. Bill Freehan. Catcher of the Tigers coming up, batting 270. 14 homers, 45 RBI. National League leading, one to nothing, top of the second. The American League is two down, nobody on. Three and two. The Bill Freehan. Drysdale ties the record tonight, shared by Gomez and Robin Roberts. His fifth all-star start. Two down, nobody on. The 3-2 pitch to Bill Freehan. Ground ball down the third baseline. It's a fair ball. Sano with a strong arm throws him out. Sano can really fire that ball across. So it's three up, three down for the American League in the top of the second. At the end of an inning and a half, the National League won and the American League nothing. Tonight's 1968 All-Star Game being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC, where America watches more sports than on any other network. Our split screen shows you a difference in National League and American League uh, Attire, Larry Knapp's on your right with the gray flannels and the blue jacket. He's the American League umpire. Behind the plate, Jack Crawford, all in blue. And Tommy Helms of the Cincinnati Reds leads off for the National League in the last of the second. Tommy's hitting 302 with one homer, 28 runs batted in. There's a line shot to right. Howard up with the ball. Helms is going for two. The throw, and Helms is in with a double. I got a big kick out of Tommy Helms before the game. He was hitting Dave Bristol, his manager on the Cincinnati Red Ball Club. He said, Dave, you must be a lousy manager. Did I play for you? I bat seventh. I play on an all-star team up at sixth. I can't understand it. Here's 
Gary Grody up of the New York Mets, who's hitting 87 points higher this year than his lifetime average. Batting 291. Two pitch. Struck him out on a curve. First strikeout for Tion. One out. Helms at second. And let's study uh, Tion here in slow motion. Sometimes he'll flop that head around. Notice how he turns his back. Kurt. Uh, He'll look back there, but you'll notice in here that he picks up the plate before he throws the ball. In fact, quite a bit before he throws the ball. So he's got a good idea of where he wants the ball to be. And he looks at I think that's just his attempt at a deceptive motion. Don Kessinger of the Cubs is the batter. Got him on a fastball. Two strikeouts in a row for Tion. And Drysdale now coming up for the National League. A pitcher who can swing the bat. Kurt, yes, he can. Uh, Don uh, actually hit uh, 300 in one year as a pitcher and as a pinch hitter. I was kidding him before the game, telling him, well, why'd you come out of the ball game the other night for a pinch hitter? I said, you can pinch hit for me in the World Series. You can hit for yourself. Well, he has 28 lifetime home runs. Helms at second, two down. Last of the second. The National League's ahead, one to nothing. A ball to Drysdale. The top of the order is on deck, Willie Mays. Don is one of baseball's more handsome players. The 1-0 pitch. There's a long drive out to Willie Horton in left field. That's it. The National League is out in the last of the fact. They had no runs, one hit. There were no errors and one left at the end of two. The National League leads one to nothing. We're going now to the third inning. This is Kurt Gowdy with Pee Wee Reese and Sandy Koufax. Here are some of the other players in the American League squad. Johnson and Powell, the Orioles, Harrelson and Santiago was selected, but Gary Bell was replaced in. Santiago was injured. Tommy John, Dwayne Josephson of the White Sox. Brooks Robinson of the Baltimore Orioles. Brooks batting 243 with 10 homers, 37 RBIs. Drysdale's pitch. Bounding ball up the middle. Kessinger over by the bag to throw him out. One down. <laughs> Ask you, McDowell, Tiana of the Indians, Campanaris, Monday, and Odom of the Eve. We're going to have a pinch hitter right now. Ken Harrelson, who has probably been the batting story of the major leagues this year. This is his first All-Star game. He was given an outright release by the Athletics last year, joined the Red Sox, had a chance for a second bonus contract, and leads the American League in batting with 305 average. He's hit 17 homers and has 60 runs batted in. The Hawk. He has 40 suits, 67 sport jackets, 80 pair of shoes. He is the mod dresser of the Major Leagues, and every one of his jackets and suits or shirts as the hawk stitched in. One out for the American League. Top of the third. The National League's ahead one to nothing. Drysdale's pitch is over to him. One and one. Drysdale, by the way, has just broken a record. He has now worked 18 and two-thirds innings. The most innings ever pitched by anybody in an all-star competition. This will be his last inning tonight. 
Hit a high slide on the left field line. Kurt Flood squeezed over there in the corner. Two down. Now to the top of the order and Jim Fregosi. He let off this game with a double off the left field wall. A little tapper right back to Drysdale. Another easy inning for Don Drysdale. And in the third, three up, three down at the end of two and a half. It's the National League one and the American League nothing. Louis Tiant worked two innings. Allowed two hits, one run, walked two, struck out two, and the new pitcher is the youngest man on the American League All-Star staff, John Blue Moon Odom. He's just turned 23 in May of the Oakland Athletic. He won seven and lost five this year. Earned run average of 2.38. He got that nickname Blue Moon when he was a youngster. He said they gave it to him in school. He said he had a moon face. Willie Mays singled his first time up. Every time he gets a hit, he extends his own record for most hits in all-star game competition. All one. Well, how's it look so far, Pee Wee? Well, I know one thing, that Drysdale certainly looks sharp. It looks like he's going to have a little rough time at the start, but he settled down there after the, after the first inning. One and nothing. Big cut. One and one. Some of the players on the National League squad are Lou and Rita the Braves. Johnny Bench Perez of the Reds will be in here. Rusty Stop of the Houston Astros. Both managers want to play as many men as they can, but they still want to win. 1-1 one, one pitch. Bouncing ball to shortstop. Bergosi to kill a Bruiners, one out. Kurt Flood is coming up. He walks. And the will be on deck. And, of course, Haller, aside from Drysdale, the Dodgers, Guzman and Seaver of the Mets, Woody Freeman of the Phillies. Juan Marichal is warming up. He'll come in to pitch in the fourth inning for the National League. The ground ball is short again. A longer throw by Fregosi. Right there, the big split by Killebrew. You all right? Killebrew with that split at first. And looks like he's injured himself. There it is in slow motion. Study it, Pee Wee. Well, Kurt, what I think happened, watch this throw for, for, for Gosey. It was low, and watch this stretch by Harmon Killebrew. Watch this right here. He does a split. Look. What he could have done, he could have pulled a muscle, a groin muscle. <laughs> here comes Boog Pal out of, out of the dugout to go out and uh, check on the first baseman. Now, you can see, and Harmon Killebrew is not exactly a gazelle. And he's not used to doing something like this, and I'm sure uh, he could have pulled a muscle. American League trainer, uh, Buddy LaRue of the Red Sox, out attending him. John uh, Powell of the Orioles is going to come in and play first base to replace Killebrew. There's Powell, number 26, getting his arm warmed up. And uh, they're going to take Killebrew off the field in a stretcher. And he gets a hand from the 52,000 here in the Astrodome. We'll have the report on him just as soon as they examine him in the clubhouse. So Powell goes to first base, replaces Killebrew. The National League has two down in the last of the third. They're leading one to nothing. And the batter will be Willie McCovey, who hit into a double play first time. Odom throwing a curve and missing ball one. 
300 radio stations. Including 51 ships are on the Armed Forces Radio. There are 21 countries around the world. On TV, we'll be showing replay of this game in about two weeks to our troops overseas. Fastball for a strike. The game is being seen throughout Canada and Mexico. Buck Canal for the 32nd All-Star Game and Spanish is broadcasting this throughout the South American country. 1-1 pitch. That was a beautiful changeup by Blue Moon. Just missed with the curve. It's 3-2 now. Lucky him out on the fastball. And Odom steps the side down in order in the last of the third. So at the end of three innings of play, it's the National League one and the American League nothing. First All-Star game back in 1933 was a dream game, and it still is. Fourteen of those players in that first All-Star game went on to become members of the Hall of Fame. Jimmy Fox, Lefty Grove, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Bill Dickey, Al Simmons, Charlie Gehringer, and Joe Cronin. The National League, Frankie Fish, Bill Perry, Ty Trainer, Paul Wayner, Carl Hubble, and Gabby Hart. The coaches were Eddie Collins, Bill McKechnie, and Max Carey. I wonder how many tonight, later on, will be voted in the Hall of Fame as we had from that original All-Star game. Juan Marichal is now pitching of the Giants, a 15-game winner so far this year, his seventh All-Star game appearance. And he's facing the Twins' Rob Carew, who bounced the first, his first time up. Strike one to him. The American League's had only one base runner for Gossie, who doubled in the first. Marichal will throw all speed, overhand you, sidearm you, and has probably as fine as control as any pitcher in baseball. Strike two. I think he'd walked only uh, 20, 23 men all year and nearly 200 innings of pitching. Kurt, and occasionally he'll do the same thing that Tia does. He'll look back into center field and not look at you. Uh, he does a lot of the same things. I think not quite as herky-jerky as Tia. So. He gives you that big leg kick that we'll show you. There's a bounding ball. A second. Kessins are over there and comes up with another good play. He had to really get something on that one. And he had to wait for the second hop. So Carew bounces out, Kessinger to McCovey. One out. August Fremsky up, popped up his first time. Frank Howard's going to be on deck. Kreski hits a hot ground ball. Helms up with it to McCovey. And the National League playing brilliant in the infield. Helms took a base hit away from this Kreski. That was a very fine play by Tommy Helms, Kurt. It was also a good play by Willie McCovey. Willie McCovey went over for that ball, and then had to come back to bag and come, turn completely around, and Helms made a perfect throw. Watch this play by Tommy. The ball hopped up for him. He's looking right at it, as you can see. The throw, he has to wheel, turn around to his left. Here's the throw. Now we're back to live action, and Frank Howard up, lined to short his first time. The 2 2 pitch. Side arms him and strikes him out. Well, that's it for the American League in the top of the fourth. At the end of three and a half innings, it is still the National League one and the American League nothing. Next Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, it's the Dodgers against the Braves on NBC's Major League Baseball. And the fans in Los Angeles and Atlanta will see the game between the Phillies and the Pirates. Don't forget the Sandy Koufax show just before the game. Every Saturday, our Major League Game of the Week on NBC. We have a new right fielder, Tony Oliva, now, who plays Frank Howard. Willie Horton stays in left. He's going to lead off the fifth inning. They'll let him back. And here's Hank Aaron for the National League in the last of the four. Aaron, Santo, and Helms this inning. Facing John Odom. Now the delivery. Look for a bad pitch. Grand tag. strike out for the pitcher put out for the game. 
So Hank Aaron went fishing. One out, and Ron Sano coming up, bounced to short. In the first inning. Well, the infield play so far has been the standout. Tonight. First base runner against Odom since he came in in the third. And Tommy Helms of the Reds is up. He doubled the right. His first trip. They got three and one on Helms. He can handle a bat. He's tough to strike out. Ron Seno on it first. Look out. They may send him. Seno getting his lead. There he goes. Ball four. So now the National League has runners on first and second. One out. And the Mets' Jerry Grody is coming up. He struck out his first time. Only ball to Fergosi. They have one. Peru upset at second. They can't get the man at first. He was taken out of there by Tommy Helms, a very aggressive player. So it's a force out from Fergosi to Peru at second base. Ron Sano's at third. Gary Grody's at first. And the shortstop of the National League, Don Kessinger, up. He struck out his first time. a pretty good football block in the career. Really took him out of there. Play Kessinger to the opposite field. It's a ground ball of Fregosi. Easy flip for the fourth out, and John Odom works out of the jam in the last of the fourth. No runs for the National League, no hits, there were no errors, and two left. At the end of four, the score is the National League one, and the American League nothing. Uh, in the black dress, Lucy Nugent, who is uh, the guest of Judge Roy Hoffines here tonight. The judge is in the dark suit with the glasses in his private box in the right field corner. You can see his apartment. It is early King Peru. It's all done in gold. But now we're going to the fifth inning and in here to detail the play-by-play -play action for you. The fellow who played in nine of these all-star games, the former captain of the Dodgers, the little Kentucky Colonel, Mr. Harold P. Wee Reese. Thank you, Mr. Gaddy. I think you may have given me one there, pal, but I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. The first hitter for the American League will be Willie Harton facing Juan Marshall. It's been all pitching so far in this All-Star game. There's a little tap over Marshall's head to second base of Tommy Helms. He'll make a great play. There he is, number 19, Tommy Helms, the Cincinnati Reds. Some great plays in this game tonight. Watch this. A high topper. Marshall just makes a leap at it. Watch him. All in one motion. Look at that. He, he keeps it up. He's going to be voted the outstanding player in this game. He's got a double and he's made two brilliant fielding plays. Good foul. The first time up tonight. Hits one high down that right field line. He took over after Harmon Killebrew. Did a split out there at first base on a low throw from Bergosi. Had to be carried off the field with a stretch. I don't think it's anything too serious. It's a full groin muscle. One strike on him. And that screw ball. And he takes a little off that screw ball, like a changeup. Yes, he does, Pee Wee. I think the whole giant organization throws their changeup and turns it over a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, one of their scouts didn't have something to do with that, Carl Hubble. Could have had. Two strikes on Boog Powell. Did he go around? Yes, sir. Shag Crawford. Behind home plate said he did. He started to hold up, but it may have been a strike anyway. So Marshall gives him another screwball just on that outside corner. Let's take a good look at one Marshall in slow motion. Sandy? 
Here you watch Marischal, even with the big kick and a lot of other things he does, he'll pick up that plate and say, riveted on it over his shoulder. He's got, you know, just great control and great stuff. And here comes the screwball. I think, well, we didn't see it. Go ahead. So I, th I thought we might be able to see it, but uh, the next pitch was there. Say one thing, look at me like he almost went down to his back. The two and two pitch to Bill Freehand. He struck him out. That's all for Bill Freehand. And that's all here in the top half of the fifth inning for the American League. No runs, no hits, no ads, and no one left on. After four and a half innings of play, it's still the National League one and the American League nothing. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Marshall supposed to be the first hitter. Where we're going to have a pinch hitter. It'll be Tom Halleck. Of the Dodgers batting a cool 300. The new pitcher for the American League All-Stars will be Denny McLean. We also have a new catcher, Askew, from the Cleveland Indians. We have a new center fielder, Rick Mundy. Yastrzemski has moved from center to left. Tony Oliva in right field. Tom Halleck. The first pitch, a good fastball, but Denny McLean a little too high. Ball one on him. There's a ball hit high out into right field. The second baseman, Peru, goes back. In comes Oliva. Oliva underneath it in Texas or out number one. You have the best hitters in the American League, the best hitters in the National League, but you also have the best pitchers the National American League, and I've said so many times, it seems like good pitching always stops good hitting. And that's what's happened tonight. Buddy May has scored the only run in this ball game. He's one for two. McLean throws a sidearm pitch way outside. It gets by as two. Ball one on him. Maybe last year they struggled 15 innings. Only three runs were scored. The National League winning two to one. There were a lot of strikeouts, and they all blamed it on the twilight hour. Well, we've got perfect lighting here tonight. Eight o'clock game, no weather problems, and the uh, same old story, good pitching stopping them. A fastball in there for call strike one, one ball and one strike. The last two All-Star games have been the same score, two to one, extra inning. National League won both of them. They have won five straight, and that's a record. A high hopper to Brooks Robinson at third. Over to Book Powell, and that's all for Willie May. So it's two up and two down here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. This fellow, a pretty country good ball player right there, Brooks Robinson. That brings up Kurt Flood. He walked in the first inning, routed out to the shortstop. His last time up. A little slider way outside, so Kurt Flood. It's a free ticket, and that's the fifth one given up for the American League tonight. And that brings up big stretch. Denny McLean, this is his second All-Star game. And there he is, number 17. He started the 1966 game at St. Louis. He retired nine men in a row. During the season, he's now have the, he has a seven-game winning streak. McCovey takes a breaking pitch in there. Call strike two. One ball and two strikes. Red Shandies before the game said he'll leave it up to his players when they want to run. He will not give a steal signal. Looks like he was going there and McLean just about had him leaning. Bob was trying to take that walking lead. Let's watch him. Didn't go. McCovey swung right through a fastball and he struck out. And that's all for McCovey and that's all for the National League here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. So after five full innings, it's still the National League. One in the American League, nothing. Going in the top half of the sixth inning, there's the ground crew here. They're dressed as, as spacemen and they're the quickest ground crew in any league. They really fly around or get in and get out. We have a few changes. Steve Carl new pitcher for the National League of the St. Louis Cardinals. Brooks Robinson on the first pitch. 
Hits a high fly out to left field to Matty Lou, who just came in there. Now let's take a look at the changes. The new pitcher, Steve Carlton of the Cardinals. The new catcher, Tom Haller of the Dodgers. The new left fielder, Matty Alou of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Rick Mundy. When he came into this game, they put him batting in the ninth position. So that would make the pitcher, Danny McLean, batting in the fifth spot. Rick Money of the Oakland Athletics. Dewey, this is the youngest player in the American League uh, squad. Rick Mundy's 22. Little high chopper. There's Carlton. You better hurry because he can fly. Let's see about Drysdale and Marshall. They've only... The American League has only had one base runner, and that was for Gossi in the first inning. Telling you. Marshall pitched two innings. He faced six men, struck out three of them. For Gossi. The hitter with two outs. He takes the curveball inside. Ball one. They now have retired 17 men in a row, the National League pitchers. Her ball in there for call strike one. One ball and one strike. Steve Carlton, a big left hander from the St. Louis Cardinals. Swing and a miss. Strike two. The score? The National League All-Stars, one. The American League All-Stars, nothing. We're in the top half of the sixth inning. It has been all pitching. Him out on a high fastball, way outside, and that's all for Pagosi, and that's all for the American League All Stars in the top half of the sixth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. After five and a half innings of play, it's still the National League one, and the American League the sixth inning. The first hitter for the National League All Stars will be Henry Aaron. We've had a couple of more changes. Have a new shortstop, Bert Campanera. A new third baseman, Don Wirt. The first pitch to Henry Aaron is inside, ball one. Campaneras. Fastball just got the outside corner, makes a count one ball and one strike. Campaneras plays with the Oakland Athletics. Don Work, Detroit Tigers. Line drive, base hit out of the left field. Yostrzemski down on one knee, up with the ball. Henry Aaron makes a big turn at first base back in there. And that's the third hit the National Leaguers have here. There's the scoreboard. Everyone hollers charm. Ron Santo. There goes Henry Aaron. Askew's throw it to Peru. Looks to me like she got a little mixed up. Looks like Campanaris thought Peru was going to take it, and Peru gave off to Campanaris. There was just a split second late then to put the tag. Watch this now. Watch Peru come over. They both kind of hesitate. Peru backs off. No one there. They may have had a chance for him. I think they may have had him, Peru. They're both behind the bag looking for the other one to cover so they could back up the play. No one away. Watch Aaron at second. Peru made a bluff at him the last time there. There's our shot from the gondola. Fastball. Outside, three and two. Henry Aaron at second base. I don't think I'd want to be operating that camera up in that gondola. Outside, ball four. Santo gets the sixth walk given up by the American League pitchers. Keon walked two. Odom walked two. Now the McLean has walked two. So here's a little fellow up there right now. That's quite a night. Runners on first and second. No one out. Looks to me like they're not expecting the bunt. He goes to the right side with the career over to Campanaris to put Powell and not in time. Turn, gives the ball to Campanaris. And the ball was handled pretty fast. 
But Helms went down there real quick like. And he's saying, what's all we're cheering about? Well, we have one of their own coming to the bat right now. Rusty Starr, who plays right here in the Astrodome for the Houston Astros. And he's having a pretty good year. A pretty good year, I'd say a great year. Batting 317. Here was a young, big bonus player that struggled. He went, they sent him down, brought him back up again, and finally last year he found himself. And he caught up with big league pitching. He's still young, looks like he has a brilliant career ahead of him. He passed it up. Don Wirt at third of the Tigers underneath it. And takes it for out number two. We're going to have a pinch hitter. Billy Williams of the Cubs. Batting for shortstop Don Kessinger. Batting 274. Aaron at third. Helms at first. Got two good base runners. Air ball hit out in the right field. Tony Oliva should have no trouble with it. Underneath it and takes it for the third out. And that's all for the National League here. The bottom half is six inning. No run. On one hit, no air, and two men left on base. So the score up to six full innings. Still the National League, one in the American League. Nothing. Fans Wednesday night, Johnny Mathis, Jackie Vernon, and the Harford's Bazaar will be just a few of the guests when Big Ed McMahon hosts the Kraft Music Hall. The fun starts Wednesday night at 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock Central Time, right here on NBC. We're going in the top half of the seventh inning, and it gives me a great deal of pleasure to bring in the old fisherman, Mr. Kurt Gotti. Come on in, Kurt. All right, thank you, Pee Wee. And uh, we have another pitcher now for the National League, Tom Seaver of the New York Mets. Red Shane Deans started Drysdale. He worked three innings, gave up one hit, no runs. Marichal pitched two perfect innings. Steve Carlton put the side out in order in the sixth, and Seaver's on. Cardenas has gone to shortstop. Seaver working his second All-Star game in two years. He pitched the 15th inning last year and held the American League in check. Carew, Yastrzemski, and Oliva. Will be up for the American League in the top of the seventh. Change up, a little bounding ball, charged by Cardenas, has him easily, and there's one out in the top of the seventh. Now Carl Yastrzemski just topped that one. Foul the back. Foul again. Carl wears the protective ear flap. Bounces that one foul. <laughs> Got him on a fastball. Oh, they're two down, and Tony Oliva is coming up for the first time in the game. He's hitting 281 with 13 homers, 44 runs batted in. Now, here's the type of batter who'll spray the ball all over. He'll hit the outside pitch down the left field line, pitch through the middle and the center, and he'll pull the inside pitch. You never know where he's going to hit. dugout and the foul is on top of the dugout. Oliva has trouble holding on to his back. He sails it up into the stands and he's done it so much around American League ballparks now. Those fans are back at first base in the box seats are always leery when he gets up there. Cheap pass. National League dugout waving the white towel, surrendering. <laughs> Two down, nobody on. One strike to Tony Oliva. And the ball. There's a smash in the deep left center. That ball is well, just missed the home run. Oliva's in a second with a stand-up double. That's what we mean, he can hit the ball anywhere. 
Askew batting 273 with the Indians. Two homers, 23 runs batted in. To join us late, the only run of this game came in the first inning. The National League's ahead, one to nothing. Looking a uh, high inside fastball. No runs for the American League. One hit, there were no errors, one left. In the middle of the seventh, the score the National League won and the American League nothing. This is Kurt Gowdy with Pee Wee Reese and Sandy Koufax from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, and Sam McDowell is the new pitcher for the American League. This year he's won eight, lost eight, earned run average of 1.55, and he leads the majors in strikeouts with 168. Haller leading off for the National League in the last of the seven. There's that high hard one by McDowell. One away in the last of the seventh. And Willie Mays, the captain of the National League, coming up the single, grounded out flat. And has scored the only run of this game. No one has ever played Major League Baseball with more enthusiasm than Mays. He's a little rest now and then, but he can still go at the age of 36. Look at that cut. Fouls it back. Ball one. Willie hit his 500th home run here in the Astrodome. Right down here, sir. A top foul. That's fading toward the seat. Out of play. McDowell strikes him out. Well, McDowell struck out two in a row. Now here's the top batter in the major leagues this year, Matty Alou of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Three brothers from one family, the Alou family in the major leagues. Matty Alou, Philippe Alou with the Braves, Adrian Alou with the Giants. And he's hitting 344. He's a singles type hitter. Hits infield bounder, little line drive, pokes the ball around. Fouls the back. McDowell is wicked. He has that live fastball and a curveball. It really comes in and breaks off. He has as good a stuff as anyone in recent years in the major. Strike two. He's been erratic. See that curveball, Sandy? Kurt, uh, Sam's got great stuff. Uh, if anything, uh, he's been accused of, of being like a Tom Edison out there. He experiments and wants to throw every pitch that's ever been invented. And everybody that's ever hit at him said if he just stuck to a fastball and curveball, he'd never give up a hit. There's a backhand grab by Campanaro. Safe at first base. Campanaro's making that play. Now he's going to get the base hit for the long throw from the hole and handle it very well. Watch this in slow motion. This is what they call that bang-bang play at first. Pee -wee. You better believe it. Watch Campanaris. He goes a long way for this ball, and Manny Alou can fly. Watch this now. Watch him get in position. Braces himself on that right foot. Get something on the ball. Watch this. Just barely beat it. And that's how he hits. He hits him left and right. High hoppers and beats him out. Good hitter. Matty Alou at first, two down in the last of the seventh. The National League ahead one to nothing, and Willie McCovey up has hit into a double play and struck out twice. McDowell has tried a hobby, a woodworker. Two strikes. And it is. He struck out the side. That was a quick one right around the knees. No run for the National League in the seventh. One hit, there were no errors, one left. At the end of seven, it's the National League one and the American League nothing. Powell leading off in the eighth inning has taken ball one from Tom Seaver of the Mets. A one run pitch to Powell. Bounds at Powell. One and two. Mickey Mantle is on deck to pinch yet. And he'll get a big ovation when he comes up. There's the mix, the captain of the American League star squad. A one-two pitch. Struck him out in a fastball. One away in the eighth. And here comes Mantle. Listen to the applause. Now it's a 
standing ovation for him. Mr. Mantle, Frank Durant, Mantle, the 16th All-Star game, hitting 233 this year, always a hard luck player, plagued with injuries throughout his career, over 529 lifetime homers, ball and strike one, now in the twilight of his career. American League has only one player left in the bench who Available for a pinch hitter, a non-pitcher, that's Wayne Josephson of the White Sox. Seaver throws him the slow curve. Change up curve, and the count is one and two. Only two Amer American leaguers are reached base tonight, both doubles. They've had two hits. And he struck out. And Seaver has now struck out four men. In an inning and two-thirds, Mantle gets a hand as he goes back. And the Tigers' Don Wirt is up for the first time. I'll tell you how brilliant this National League pitching's been tonight. Drysdale, Marischal, Carlton, and Seaver have not walked a man. They have struck out eight. And there's a drive to right field. That ball may be headed in the corner and extra bases. Wirt is in the second. Aaron into Tommy Helms. And it's a double. The tying runs on second for the American League. Don Wirt doubling into the right field corner. And a left-handed batter, Rick Mundy of the Oakland Athletics, will be up. They have an odd thing right now down the National League bullpen. Bob Gibson. He's standing in front of the two pitchers warming up for the National League. We'll try and show you a shot of this. And this is a protective. Uh, he is there. They have their backs to the plate. In case the ball line drives it down that line, Gibson would protect them. Rick Mundy bounced out his first time. Takes the curve for a strike to the corner. Mundy should have years of stardom ahead of him. Ladies baseball at Arizona State, as did Reggie Jackson and Sal Bando, three Arizona State players on that open club. Fastball blown by him, strike two. Struck him out, and Seaver strikes out the side. He has struck out five men in two innings. The American League had no runs, one hit, there were no errors, and one left. At the end of seven and a half, it's the National League one. The American League, nothing. We have a new pitcher for the American League, Mel Stottlemyre, the New York Yankees. He's won 11 and lost five. A 2.30 earn run average this year and his second All-Star game. Well, he'll be the fifth pitcher tonight for the American League. They've had Tiant, Odom, McLean, McDowell, who struck out the side in the seventh, and now Stottlemyre. And a strikeout pace is quickly. Seaver struck out the side in the eighth. Hank Aaron played all the way. What struck out single to left, but he's stolen the base. Stottlemyre has been a workhorse with the Yankees the last three years. He's pitched over 250 innings each season. A strike three. Aaron not looking. One out in the last of the eighth. And Ron Sano is coming up. Now, wait a minute. Dick Williams, the American League manager, has come out on the field. And he is waving Tommy John, the left-hander, in. The Stottlemyre faces only one man. Williams said before the game that he wanted to get every player he could in. He's got a right-hander, Gary Bell, working. Well, there's a break in the action here at the Astrodome. The score is the National League one and the American League nothing. Alomar pitched the one batter. Now Tommy John of the White Sox is on. All one to Ron Santo. There's only a Josephson has gone behind the plate of the White Sox. 
And only one man of the American League has not been in this game, and he's warming up now in the American League bullpen, and that's Gary Bell, the Red Sox. A 1 0 pitch. Fly ball in the shallow left. Dostrinsky grabs it on a hop, throws it in, and Thanos on with a fifth hit for the National League. Hurts all the fans watching this game tonight. If they have color television, they've seen all that beautiful grass out there on the infield. Of course, they know that it's not grass, it's astroturf. And it's uh, quite an unusual thing. It's, uh, it's made out of nylon. It's about a half inch thick. It's got about a quarter inch pad underneath it, three quarter inch pad underneath of that. And they lay this thing down in 15 feet wide strips. And about 200 feet long, Kirk. And it's put together with a zipper. And this, they say they have over three miles of zipper in the outfield and infield. That's the longest zipper in the world right here in Texas. <laughs> well, that's where it belongs. <laughs> Tommy Helms hits the ground ball to second. Johnson tags the base runner and is out at first. A double play. Dave Johnson to Blue Powell. Called the National League in the eighth inning. It's no runs, one hit, there were no errors, nobody left. At the end of eight, it's the National League one and the American League nothing. The American League is coming up in the ninth inning, trailing one to nothing. Unless they tie or rally, they're going to lose their sixth game in a row. The All-Star history has had two chapters, the early chapter, in which the American League dominated. They led 12 games to four after the 1949 game. They had uh, a complete edge over the National League, and since then, the National League has won 16 of the last 21 All-Star games. The last American League win was at Chicago's Comiskey Park in 1962. All right, we have Ron Reed now, the Atlanta Braves on the pitch. Philippe Ballou has gone into left field. Ron Reed, an ex-basketball player, has won eight, lost four, with an earned run average of 3.20. And it's the top of the American League batting order, Campaneris, Dave Johnson and Carl Yastrzemski. The American League has had three hits tonight. They've all been doubled, but the National League has not walked a batter. Their pitching staff. Well, the National has received six walks. Campanaris hits the bounder to Sano, and quickly one away in the top of the ninth inning, and the American League down to their last two outs. Dave Johnson's up for his first time at the Baltimore Orioles. Our statistician tonight has been Alan Roth, our production stage manager, Jim O'Gorman. Javier. Perez has gone to third, replacing Sano. Javier has gone to second, replacing Tommy Helms. Dave Johnson takes the strike. There have been three shutouts in all-star games, and there have been no one-to-nothing games. And right now, it's one-to-nothing in the ninth. One out. Foul back at strike two. Well, this game has just carried the pattern that we've seen all year of a tremendous pitching year in the major league. Shutout after shutout, scoreless innings, strikeout record. I want Sandy Colfax to talk about this because there's been a lot of arguments going on. Here's the two strike pitch. Foul away. Sandy, they say it's the hitters. They can't hit anymore. And other fellas say, no, the pitching's better than ever, especially the young pitchers. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, the young pitching and the newer, newer ballparks have a lot to do with it. Uh, I think years ago, pitchers didn't get to the major leagues until they were 26, 27, 28 years old. Where today, they're here when they're still throwing hard and know how to pitch. They get behind the hitters. They throw the curveball. We had Tom Seaver, I guess, is only 23. We had a great year last year, and he was 22. Uh, Carlton, who's just a young fellow also. And these boys know how to pitch before they get here, and they're only 21 or 22 years old. Strike three right in there to a fastball. That was right down the middle. Ten American Leaguers have struck out tonight. in the last two and two-thirds innings. And now they're going to bring a left-hander on to pitch the Estremski. 
Gary Kuzman of the New York Mets. So there's a break in the action here at the Astrodome. The score is the National League one and the American League nothing. Gary Kuzman, 24 years old, from Appleton, Minnesota, the New York Mets. 11 wins and four losses. Inter now trying to get the final out of the game if he can. He's pitching the Ostremski who takes ball one. Ostremski is fouled out, grounded out, and struck out. Left-hander against left-hander, and Bob Gibson is starting to warm up for the National League bullpen just in case. A 1-0 pitch, ball two, and also Woody Freiman. There's Gibson, a tremendous pitcher of the Cardinals, and Woody Freiman, number 22, of the Philadelphia Phillies. Two balls and no strikes. Tony Oliva on deck, a left-hander. Strike, two and one. We've had 19 strikeouts tonight. Ten American Lakers have struck out nine Nationals. That's all, two and two. Four of the last six American Lakers have struck out. Two balls, two strikes, two down, nobody on. He struck it out. Final score, 1-0. And the National League pitching staff, brilliant tonight, did not walk a batter and struck out 11. The scoreboard, the $2 million scoreboard going off. And once again, pitching, completely dominating baseball's top all-stars. So the final score again. The National League had one run, five hits, and no errors. The American League, no runs, three hits, and one error. The Astrodome, the National League wins at one to nothing. Right now, let's go down to the playing field. Pee Wee Reese and his guest, the captain of the National League, Willie Mays. Okay, thank you, Kurt. Thank you very much. And it's always a pleasure to see this fellow. Had the opportunity of playing against him for a number of years. Willie, you never seem to lose your enthusiasm. What I think when I do, Pee Wee, I'll probably quit, but... Uh, I, I don't want to lose in a, in a game like this. Uh, I think I'm playing against the best in the American League, and uh, I'm just thankful that I had a chance to play it, start at least in the All-Star game. I was sorry that uh, uh, Pete got hurt, but I always, when I first came in, I got to Pete, that show run, but uh, he, he laughed about it. But again, it's always a pleasure to play in a game like this. Well, talking about Pete Rose, it's a pretty nice thing for this fellow to come down to this All-Star game. Maybe he could have gone fishing someplace, but he still wanted to come to the game. Well, I hear a lot of guys, well, gee, I want those three days off, but I don't think that's true, Pete. I think uh, when you get opportunity to play in a game like this, you want to come and, and just be among the 25 guys we have here. Well, they the pitching, especially in the All-Star League, in the All-Star game. Why is it so strong? you have any reason for it? Well, I, I think is that we don't we don't see the pitches uh, enough. Here. I think uh, a guy like Odom, I, I don't I didn't know what he threw, and uh, by the time you get used to him, he's out of there. So I think uh, it's the lack of uh, not seeing a pitcher uh, over the course of a year. I, I think in National League, uh, like this, you play a, a series uh, against a club, you know just about what each pitcher would, would do. But in the All-Star game, they're out of there so quick that you, you just don't know anything. Could it be, too, that the pitchers know that they're only going to have to go two or three innings they can throw a little harder, they don't have to pace themselves? Could be. I, I understand they can only go three, and you, you might be right in there. Really? You've uh, had a quite a long career. Any idea how much longer you can go? <laughs> well, uh, Pee -wee, I, I really don't know. I, I think my body is in really good, good condition right now. I, I don't think I'm slow enough to, to matter that uh, I'd be able to quit. I'm not embarrassed myself out there, uh, but I'm not hitting like I should uh, when I was 20 years old. But, well, who is, though? But uh, guys that are uh, 37, 38 years old are not even playing. So I'm very thankful that my, I can go the pace I'm going with the type of body that I have. Thank you, Willie, and I guarantee you, pal, you'll never embarrass yourself. Thanks a lot for Thank you very much for having me, Pee-wee. Okay, Willie. Now then, back up to Kurt Gowdy and Sandy Koufax in the booth. All right, thank you, Pee-wee, for another nice job. And this was the first one to nothing shutout in uh, All-Star history. We had three previous shutouts. And also, both clubs set a new record for the fewest hits by both teams, eight in the game. We had 20 strikeouts, Sandy. Uh, good fielding, especially early in the game by the National League infield. And of course, the big factor was the National League pitching staff not walking a batter in the game. I think that, uh, that's a big factor, the fact that 
They didn't give up many hits, but if a couple of men have been on both base on balls, maybe you give up one run. Tommy Helms did a great job defensively, as you said. And uh, it's always a pleasure to see the guy that Pee Wee had on. Uh, I don't, like Pee Wee said and Willie said, his enthusiasm never stops. I think he's great. I'll say one thing, both managers tried to get everybody in there. Yes, they did. They got everybody but two pitchers on the National League team and one pitcher on the American League team. There were 47 players in the game. Well, uh, I think it's great. I think we ought to mention the guys that didn't get in. It was Bell for the American League and uh, Bob Gibson for the National and uh, Woody Freeman. All right, and that's the story, and thanks to you again, Sandy. Sandy Koufax, Pee Wee Reese, and Kurt Gowdy here from the Astrodome. Once again, the National League wins it one to nothing. <laughs>